bucks for bamboo. In rural Sichuan, Europe's taxpayers are funding a $2.5 million project to help revive, boost and sustain stocks of this fast-growing, versatile substitute for timber. Managed by the International Network for Bamboo and Rattan, in Bar, the programme also promotes safer factory working conditions, more effective marketing and greater use of bamboo in construction. The goal is to strengthen economic recovery in a region where the production chain was destroyed in the 2008 earthquake. But there's a long way to go. A lot of problems, I think, for the workers' safety, for resource efficiency. So I think the pro this project can bring a lot of ex experience or expertise from outside to help the local people. Indeed, but in Europe's age of austerity, why isn't China financing projects like this itself? The world's second largest economy has some $2.5 trillion in foreign reserves. Yet it still welcomes $2.5 billion annually in foreign aid, $70 million from the European Commission's budget alone, millions more from EU member countries, including cash-strapped Greece and Ireland. We try to adapt smartly to this situation where we have to help a country which has huge financial um, means. but. I can say that in spite of that, these programs that we are helping would not be done if there was not our help. Poverty reduction, environmental protection, strengthening civil society. These kinds of targeted programs are actually political priorities for major donors like the EU, the US and Japan. But there's also a legal explanation for aiding China. For sure, China has the means to dazzle by spending billions on events like the Shanghai Expo and the Beijing Olympics, not to mention $100 billion annually maintaining its military. And the country has also emerged as a multi-billion dollar donor itself, though it's accused of propping up unstable African regimes as it seeks valuable mining rights to feed its industries. But despite having most of the world's billionaires, China's per capita annual income is below $4,000. And so under the framework of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the OECD, China still qualifies for international aid. I'm not saying that is a taboo question, but it's a question that for the time being, our leadership, let's say, uh, has decided not to take an, uh, an aggressive stand. In 2008, OECD member Japan contributed over a billion dollars to China while Germany, the second largest donor, provided half a billion. France and Britain each year marked over $200 million, the US $65 million. Britain and Germany, however, are now refocusing their efforts on more impoverished countries, though they remain major contributors to the EU budget. But ever mindful of trade relations, most governments tread carefully with China, lest they offend a notoriously suspicious and sensitive recipient. Giving aid may show friendship towards China, and is also a way of communicating a message. If you stop aid to China, it may send China a political signal. It might mean that you won't be so friendly as before. What do you want to do? This can affect bilateral relationships between countries. Europe exerts more soft power through its training programs for judges. If the justice system functions better, then EU companies stand a better chance of legal redress if their rights are violated in China, where piracy is prolific. The EU is also providing expertise to help China construct a social security system. The thinking is, if Chinese consumers have an adequate health care, unemployment and pension safety net, then they'll save less and so consume more. For EU companies, if Chinese spending boosts, then imports should increase too. It looks like clutching its straws. And indeed, taxpayers and donor countries give their politicians short shrift for funding China to such an extent, given that it's a major competitor with trillions in the bank. But the aid equation is complex, as targeted projects can deliver substantial long-term benefits. By focusing alone on the cash pledge today, you don't necessarily see the wood from the trees.